struggling to get the crystal oscillator circuit to work, you're not alone. In this video, I will take most magic out of crystal oscillators by building three simple practical circuits which you can use in your own projects. We will cover the following circuits. First, the TTL74HC04, an inverter oscillator, simple and effective as a clock for digital logic projects. Then, the CMOS CD4060, great for generating lower frequencies because it has a built-in divider. Finally, a discrete transistor Colpitz oscillator, the classic discrete transistor approach creating a sine wave output often used for radio applications. For each one, I will not only show you how to build it, but also prove that it works with real measurements on the oscilloscope and the frequency counter from our previous video. No magic, just working circuits. Let's start with a TTL oscillator based on the 74HC04. The first circuit is a Pierce oscillator, a very popular type used in most digital circuits to create the clock. At the heart of the first circuit is a 74HC04 hex inverter chip. As the name implies, its job is to invert any signal it receives. The magic happens when we connect the output to the input via this 1 mega ohm resistor. We've just created an unstable state. If the output is high, it forces the input high. But a high input commands the inverter to output a low, so it switches low. Which then pulls the input low, commanding a high output. It's trapped in a continuous loop, causing an oscillation. Now we have a crystal here. How does that affect its oscillation? Well, the crystal's impedance is the lowest at its specific resonant frequency. This causes the circuit's oscillation to be pulled and locked to that frequency, which is 4 MHz in this case. The small 22 picofarad caps provide the necessary phase shift for the oscillation. They have some effect on the frequency, but the crystal is dominant by far. This 220 ohm resistor is to limit the current in the crystal to prevent overdriving it. The power is connected to the corner pins 14 and 7. It is best to add a decoupling capacitor of about 100 nanofarad over the power pins. And also, it is best to ground the inputs of the inverters that you do not use for stability. The 74HC series ICs can work from 2 to 6 volts, the HCT version 4.5 to 5.5 volts, and they are very fast. Let's power this one up and see how it works. Here you see the circuit on a breadboard, the waveform on an oscilloscope, and the frequency on my DIY frequency counter. The IC has 6 inverters. I added the 100 nanofarad decoupling cap and grounded the 5 inputs which I did not use. This crystal is 4 MHz and the supply voltage is 5 volts. If I decrease the voltage, the circuit will keep working until 2 volts. Let's go back to 5 volts and try some higher frequency crystals. I will disconnect my Hantec oscilloscope as it cannot display such high frequencies anyway. Now it's 4 MHz, let's try an 8 MHz. Ok, that works well. Let's go up to 16. Ok, no problem. Now let's take the highest frequency crystal that I have, 27 MHz. Actually it's 27.12, and that also works very well. Now let's have a look at the second circuit. This circuit is based on the CMOS Logic IC CD4060. This IC has a binary divider and can operate at higher voltages. 3 to 15 volts. Here at the bottom you see it is the same as the first circuit. Inside the EIC is also an inverter driving the oscillator. What is cool about this IC 
is the binary divider outputs as you see here on the right. The first output is at Q4, dividing the frequency by 16. Then Q5, dividing the frequency by 32. Then it continues to Q14, which divides the oscillation frequency by 16384 or 14 bits. You see that the frequency of the crystal I selected here is 4096 kHz, exactly 12 bits. So in this circuit, we will get exactly 1 kHz at Q12, which divides by 4096. For this IC, the power is connected to the corner pins 16 and 8, and also here it is best to add a decoupling capacitor of about 100 nF over the power pins. Let's power this one up and check it out. Here you see the second circuit, the CD4060 on the breadboard. And I measure the signal of Q12 on my frequency counter. I use a 4096 kHz crystal, and you see at Q12 we have exactly 1 kHz. The voltage now is 12 volts. If I decrease the voltage, it will keep working down to about 3 volts. Let's go back to 12 volts and try some higher frequency crystals. Let's start with 8 MHz. That's almost 2 kilohertz, so that's correct. Now let's try 16 megahertz. That's almost 4 kilohertz, so the circuit is working. Now I will try a crystal of 18.432 megahertz. Exactly 4.5 kilohertz. That's correct. 18.432 divided by 4096 is 4500. Now let's try a 22 megahertz crystal. Okay, at 22 megahertz it does not work anymore. So this IC is not as fast as the previous one. Let's continue to the last circuit, a rock bottom oscillator built with a single NPN transistor. The third circuit only uses a single transistor. It is very popular online and often referred to as a Colpitz oscillator, which was invented by Edwin Colpitz in 1918. It was a significant invention because it has a more stable frequency than all earlier oscillators. He did not use a crystal yet. That was done later by George Pierce, who also changed the circuit. Now, I do not think the circuit here is a real Colpitz oscillator, as a Colpitz gets its output and feedback from the collector. In this circuit, the feedback comes from the emitter, via the upper 22 picofarad capacitor, to close the loop and sustain the oscillation. Anyway, it works well. As mentioned, I used 22 picofarad caps and that worked for me, but I see many designs online that use higher values here, like 150 or 220 picofarad. The transistor is a 2N3904. It is a very common transistor and it has a transition frequency of 300 MHz. Other types will also work. For instance, a 2N2222 or a BC547 will also work fine. Make sure you check the pinning. For instance, the BC547 is mirrored compared to the 2N3904 here. Let's power this one up and have a look how it works. Here you see the transistor circuit. Because it has quite some connections, I did not use a breadboard, just to have a better overview. I powered the circuit with 12V and connected the 4 MHz crystal. Here you see the frequency on the frequency counter and the waveform on my oscilloscope. It's a sine wave of about 6 volts peak peak. Now let me reduce the voltage. 5 volt, 3 volt, 1.2 volt, and it is still working. 
my power supply cannot go any lower. That's amazing. Now let me disconnect my oscilloscope and we try some other crystals. Go back to 12 volt. Let's start with 8 megahertz. Okay, that works fine. Let's try 60 megahertz. No problem at all. Now let me try my highest crystal of 27.12 megahertz. So this circuit works fine at 27 megahertz. And I don't think that's the limit, but I don't have any other crystals. Now let's conclude and compare the three circuits. Here we have all three circuits next to each other. The first circuit, based on the TTL7407 inverter IC, is the simplest, and it's quite easy to build. If you just use the part values in the schematic, it will just work. It is fast. The limit is not 27 MHz. This circuit can achieve higher frequencies. The voltage is limited from 3 to 6 volts. The output is a square wave, so you can use it as a clock circuit for digital circuits. The second circuit, based on the CMOS 4060 IC, is also easy to build. It works well, also on a breadboard. It is not as fast as the first circuit, but has a wide voltage range from 3 to 15 volt. And it has a handy divider, making it very easy to use. The frequency limit of the circuit I built was about 18 MHz. The third circuit has more components and it is more sensitive. I needed some tuning and tweaking to get it working. The output cannot take any DC load, so keep this 10 nanofarad capacitor here. The voltage range is very wide. It can even work down to 1.2 volts. That really surprised me. I hope you liked the video. If it was useful for you, please like and subscribe and leave your experiences in the comments.